What's up, War Room? Welcome back. Two nights in a row, two different Connors. Our standard Connor is here, of course. Our go-to Connor on draft week. Final mock picks from CR, who's probably done more draft content than any human being alive, I think, the last few months. Um, And this is where you're going to get his final predictions for the Jets. So War Room, we're going to go through Connor's final mock picks. We're going to go through some bets that we like because you can bet on the NFL draft, which is a beautiful thing. Um, Podcast, we're going to go through my final mock picks. And we're going to just talk about you know, some other news swirling around the team. Zach being traded. We'll save Connor's reaction to that for the podcast uh, and tie up any other loose ends. CR, how you feeling? You got a big board with 300 people out. Uh, 301, got, don't short 301, it. 301. You got an unbelievable draft guide out there with Dan and the team. Uh, how you feeling? I am at the point right now where when we started to record, I was taking a break from writing up a prospect that went to British Columbia. Oh, uh, so noted was, powerhouse. He did visit the Jets, Giovanni Manu. So I, I mean, we always try to write up all the guys that visit the Jets, but that's yo. Know, I always like get a couple late ones in because a couple fun facts. A couple years ago, um, the week of the draft, or maybe two weeks before the draft, I watched a little uh, a, a pass rusher from Little Eastern Michigan. By the name of Max Crosby. And I was like, oh, I really I really like this guy. I think he's got a shot. So it's just kind of sticks with you. Like if you can get a couple in at the finish line and write them up, it just makes it worth it. So uh, I go I take this thing right down to the wire, right down to the wire. I won't really stop watching tape until I wake up Thursday. Actual draft day. It's over like there's nothing left to do, but I'm excited. This is going to be this is going to be an awesome draft. There's drama, theater, so much offensive talent. I conflicting theories on so many different things. I get one phone call saying one thing, another phone call saying another. We've had guests on with different information. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's it's as open of a draft as I could remember for the Jets in a while from an excitement perspective. I think last year it was like an icing on the cake draft because it was right after the Aaron Rodgers trade. And it was like, yeah, like we're probably going to take a tackle and whatever happens, happens. Yeah. I'm like, wait, who the hell they take? And we never really digested it. And so like, and then you had, of course, the year with all the picks concentrated up high. That was sort of a different beast. And we had a, we thought we had a feel for where they were going. We had a feel with Garrett Wilson. We didn't, we were leading more towards Icky and they went sauce. Sauce was, will great. always be a surprise. Yeah, yeah. that was a, good, a pleasant surprise. That great choice. Out. Great choice. Um, but this has been, and it, this is reflected in some of the draft odds. It's, it's just kind of like, not they don't anybody's know. guess. They don't know. But it's like, no. No. are they trading up? Are they trading down? Are they staying put? We feel like it's definitely going to be offense, but it's the Jets, so you can never 100% write off defense. We, you know, we're recording this Tuesday night. It's, you know, maybe there'll be a couple more leaks, a couple more rumors, but we're about 48 hours from when the Jets make their pick. So as it stands now, are the Jets staying put at 10? Let's start with that. Are they going to stay put at 10? That's the toughest question to answer because they they don't know. Now, I can tell you, I still think they would like to move. Now, I don't think they would like to move to 32 where the Chiefs are, where the draft changes the type of prospect you're getting. I just keep looking at the Eagles at 22, who have two twos who really need a corner, a high-end corner, and wonder, are the Jets, is that too far? Like, that, we know that relationship exists. That's not the question at all. Is that too far? Do the Eagles feel like we don't have to go up that far to get the corner we like? They probably should. But is 22 too far for the Jets where they're like, ah, you know, now we're in a range where all our top tackles are gone. It's not it's, some could fall, but yes, are all the wide receivers you like are gone. Like Ryan Thomas Jr. Does he make it a 22? But I think they're open to it. And I think knowing what they value, they would love to get another day two pick back. Now, I don't think they are stuck in it where they're going to move just to move because there are a lot of players. Now, let's be real, Joe. We woke up Monday morning. And this is no disrespect. I mean, I like all of these guys. The beat, every single member of the beat had the same exact mock draft. I'm not saying like verbatim, but I saw three different beat writers with the Jets in their mock draft going up to draft Marvin Harrison. And correct me if I'm wrong, but 
And, and Samini might have been, to be totally fair, Daniel Jeremiah did this like three weeks ago. Yep. And I've seen it in a couple different places, and it doesn't mean nothing. I'm sure if the, the Jets are watching closely, both Malik Neighbors and Marvin Harrison Jr. Malik Neighbors had a visit with the Jets. So I'm sure the Jets are playing every scenario right now where, because I know Atlanta at eight is answering the phone, Tennessee at seven is answering the phone. What if it goes four quarterbacks, offensive line, and then the Giants take Marvin Harrison Jr.? And you can get into seven because Tennessee's like, oh, we're still going to get a tackle. We like at 10. Let's go up to seven and take Malik Neighbors or Marvin Harrison Jr., whoever the Giants didn't take. Like, I'm not writing that off. So up or down's in play. I would say moving down is more likely than up despite all of these, not reports, but educated guesses. But it's so hard to do that you still feel like they probably end up at 10. And that brings up the golden question of who's going to be there and what the hell are they going to do, especially if there's a couple of guys that make a lot of sense for them at different positions? Yeah, it's always the safest money that they're going to stay put. I, I think they're looking, like you said, at trade down scenarios, at trade up scenarios. I know that doesn't say or give away anything. And I think they'd be more amendable to trading up this year than maybe they might have been in the past. But they, they've shown ability to do that and be aggressive to go get their guy. That's been really more of Joe Douglas's MO versus being a trade down guy in the first round. Now, if they stay put at 10 and you'd see this in most places, the betting odds we're seeing is Brock Bowers is the favorite at about plus 180. Uh, you got Fatanu at about plus 650. Fuaga at a bus, about plus 680. Adunze at plus 800. I think that gap's uh, too big. By the way, yeah, uh, so do I. And then Fashanu at about plus nine hundred. Then you start getting into the Latham Dallas Turner range, which is like plus eighteen hundred, plus sixteen hundred. Joe Alt plus two thousand. There's a lot of names listed here. Uh, Malik Neighbors, kind of interesting dart throw. He's around plus three thousand in most That's places. That's the sprinkle. That feels sprinkle, sprinkle worthy. I'd be I'd be shouting out Dahl, but he's the only guy in any of the podcasts we recorded who said they're going to trade up, but not for Marvin Harrison Jr., not for Roma Duze, but for Malik Neighbors. Uh, so that would be you never like he, hear he, that connection. Ever. Yeah, and I feel like Neighbors, he has like, could he fill scratch some of the itch they wanted with Tyree Kill that they didn't get? Can he get bring that type of like electricity to the yes. offense that they were seeking with him? And we haven't heard a lot about him. Of course, Marvin Harrison Jr. is the bigger name. Adunze is more of the guy who's probably hovering around to the pick. It's definitely the sprinkle one. I agree with that. Um, if you're trying to like, hey, let me just throw like 20, 30 bucks right. down Right, 10 here. to 20 bucks. And like, why not? And like, let's see what happens. Probably even more so than, you know, Brian Thomas Jr. sitting at like plus 2,500. That feels more of like in a trade down scenario. I don't think they'd take him at 10. But look, we did our neighbors chatter here. We did some trade down chatter. Let's say they just stay put at 10. They can't find a trade partner. They call around. They're just at 10. If they are at 10, who is the pick? My gut right now is going with Taliza Fuanga. And I know that surprises uh, all right. a lot of people. All right. Because the aggregation more... incoming. Yeah, right. Yeah, you know that's going to be <laughs> sent everywhere. Here's the scenario. One, I don't think it's a lock Brock Bowers is there. Two, I do think is I I'm a believer that the Jets really like Brock Bowers. I don't think this is all just made up from thin air. I do think there's a little bit of like, if he was there at ten, is this a luxury we can afford, and are we going to maximize him, and all of those things. I and I'm not saying they're out on Brock Bowers because I think he's 100 percent in play. But if I just have to pick one player. It Fuanga is here's the question people probably have. Where is he playing? Well, I mean, they could start him at right tackle in theory. This is kind of funny because they move him all the time, but there's no reason ABT can't go back to his original position of left guard and Fuanga plays right guard, which a lot of people think he's like borderline, you know, pro bullish caliber in that scenario. He's a he's a top 10 player for me, so I love him. And once again, this isn't a what I would do scenario. That's harder to answer. But why I go with this, trying to draw the clues, it just fits everything Joe Douglas prioritizes, right? The big, nasty, 
great run blocker. He's good in zone and man. You don't worry. Like with Becton, it was always like, we know he could drive, get off the ball and drive people back. Can he pull and be an outside zone guy? And, and there was moments with Becton, but when he got hurt, then he lost all that. Fuanga's a really good zone blocker, considering how big he is. Uh, I think they like the DNA of the player. And I think they would have, they'd feel more confident in the plan for him rather than how the fans would feel. Now, of course, you know, Fatanu, we've talked about a lot because you just think he could play anywhere. And that's like the dream for the Jets. Like, oh, second AVT? Great. Now no injury can hurt us. Bowers, and I'm when I do this, like I'm not calculating that Roma Dunze is there, by the way. If he's there, it seems like it would be hard for them to pass on one of the big three wide receivers, but it's also hard to see one of those three just making it to 10. So, yeah, if I had to put my favorite for it, and this is, like the, like you said, aggregator central, people will overreact to this. I think this is a more open year than ever for the Jets, where there's been, like, I felt good about the Garrett Wilson situation. The sauce one surprised me. I knew they loved Jermaine, knew they loved Jermaine so much that I thought they could take Jermaine at 10. Uh, and they tried to get up earlier to get him. But this is one where it's a little bit more open. But if I had to pick one player, and this will, barring somebody calling me tonight, when I write my final mock draft for NBC for the entire first round, I will most likely have the Jets taking Taliza Fuango with the 10th overall pick. If you're good, if you get that call, you got to text me after. So I know, and I, I can, I can be prepared. Uh, look, what's funny about that. And this happened with Garrett Wilson is the guy we were talking about in early February. Great call. Was Fuaga. Was Fuaga. And it, you talk about all these other names and everything comes back full circle and you're right back to the first guy you were talking about. It's interesting, in the right? And so, yeah, and sometimes that first hunch is right. And, you know, he's still from an odds perspective. He's in the top three or four, but not a lot of Jet fans are talking about it. And I think the thought is like, well, once they got Morgan Moses, like that ship sailed. And I think as you just described. And it's flawed. And I yeah. fell victim to that, by the way. Yeah. I was like, oh, Morgan Moses is a right tackle. And I, to be fair, I've also said it's wild that they have two 33-year-old tackles that are not under contract next year to not capitalize on a great first round offensive line class when, and we'll get more into this probably now and on the pod, you could still get a playmaker in the third round, or you can come back into the second round for him. Like that's the, I've tried to really go into the thought process of what Joe Douglas is thinking here. And you're right. You, you start, you go back to the guy that was the original chalk pick for the jets that for some reason, for six weeks, everybody has gotten away from nothing changed with the tape. Nothing changed with the player, and I don't think anything changed with the scouting and front office evaluation of him. Yeah, I mean, there's no reason to think if they loved him then that they don't love him now. And depending on how the board breaks, he could very well be their best player available. It's a position in need. And then you could say, look, like, look, we need another playmaker without a doubt. Let's take our two fours and get up into round two and go get a guy we're excited about and we get some value. And then, you know what? Let's go sign Tyler Boyd. Let's go sign Odell Beckham Jr. and let's like round out the group of receivers. We know it's we know it's know. coming at some point. Yeah, we know. I'm saying Tyler Boyd, like the the pragmatist. We know they're going to sign Odell at some point. One probably. year, three million, up to eight million in incentives. Yeah. Right before right before training camp starts, cover the, the daily the news. Zach money, which is yeah, really Solomon the, Thomas's money. People forget, of course, as you said, we keep it in yes. the bank account, just in, yes. in uh, escrow for Solomon Thomas every year, one year deal. <laughs> um, so look, it would not be the. It's not going to have everyone partying up at uh, Reds when it happens, but the real time reaction will be: This makes sense on a lot of levels. People should be happy. He's awesome. Yeah. Like, do I have to yes. tweet out all twenty two of him destroying yes. people? You will. And he's You're not, gonna have to do the film room right after. He's not overweight. Like, people are going to be like, "Oh, he's another big tackle." Like, he carries the cleanest three forty you'll ever see. I, yeah. I, this is one where I feel like I'm going to have to. I can't believe I think you're, I think you're, I think you might move some betting lines with this draft. And it, 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 I think we're at this point now where it's going to catch yeah. some eyes. And look, I will get to to my predictions in the pod. We're also going to save some of the Zach chatter for the pod. But this is this is a very wide open situation, man. There's a lot of Were you of surprised by me happen. saying that? I feel like you were a little I surprised. I was yeah. surprised. Yeah, I I would have thought if you were going offensive line, you would have went Fatanu. Who I love. Um, yeah, and yeah, I, I feel like Generally, when we bat it around where you think they're leaning in round one, if it was an offensive lineman more recently, it's been Fatanu. But the first guy you brought up and the first guy we really talked about a lot was Fuaga. And, you know, the betting odds kind of reflect this. And as you said, the scouting report 
on him hasn't changed. And his perspective fit for how the Jets want to play offense and who they want to have blocking for Brees Hall hasn't changed. But he's a name that hasn't been in the discourse a lot lately, right? It's been a lot of Adunze, a lot of Bowers, a lot of trade-up for Marvin Harrison Jr. Fatano is probably the most talked about offensive lineman. Even Latham, I feel like, gets talked about more than Fawaga at this point, both because there's such extreme views on him and where he could get taken. So, listen, it's certainly a, a world where this happens. We are fired up, especially now that the draft is here, to be partnering with Underdog, Underdog Fantasy, getting the best ball drafts going, getting the pickums going. I'm having a blast with it. We're getting closer and closer to the actual NFL season where we could get those going with the Jets. But for now, we've tested out a few best ball drafts, mostly football, baseball. We're going to do our biggest money one yet once we see where all these exciting players are going this weekend. So Connor and I will share that out. Make sure you join Underdog with promo code BADLANDS to get a deposit match and to compete against Connor and I in our biggest money best ball draft yet, which we will run right after draft weekend. Get your reps in now. It's almost that time of the year. It is that time of the year. That's why we're running the draft. And sharpen your skills also on the pickums and the higher lowers, NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs. You need to be ready for this for the NFL season. CR, are you ready to go head to head and get another best ball draft? I am. I love it. Draft, set and forget the lineup, best way to live. And the pickums, they get you through the dog days of summer, right? We got baseball yes. on this time of year. You got hockey playoffs, you got NBA playoffs. It's awesome, but in football, we know things are going to crank up a couple of notches. So we've had so much fun on Underdog, and we, we haven't even gotten to a football season yet. It's going to be incredible. Yes, and remember, with best ball, you pick your team, you forget it. The highest scoring lineup will be played for you every single week. You could still follow along, see how much money you win, but light touch. So that is Underdog with promo code BADLANDS for a deposit match. Let's say it does happen. They go for Waga at 10. So now your next pick's not to what, 72? That's their round three pick, and they have the two fours. How are they How are they moving from then? Are they trading up to go get a receiver? And what receiver are you targeting? Or you feel good about what pass catcher or playmaker you could get at 72? And then I feel like one of those two fours, like everybody else, is going to Pratt or a developmental quarterback. But what, what, is, what is the move going to be then if you go Fuaga in round one? I'm trading up. Right. It, it with the Jets, you don't need to, and you've you've outlined this really well. You don't need to walk into camp with this like 10 man rookie class. This is not yeah. the, the time for that anymore. I do think they have key depth, but they have very narrow depth. Like we feel like they could maybe use a safety. They need another offensive lineman. They need another playmaker. And the third running back, even you could argue, should be a veteran, not a day three pick. So when you look at it like that, out of this draft, they have a they could use another offensive lineman, they could use another receiver, and like you said, they, it make taking a guy like Pratt in that 